tweet from at Joseph Dawson who says, I know the iPad, the not 3G version, has no GPS. If you buy a Bluetooth GPS device, could you get it to work with the iPad? Funny you should mention that. Um, GPS with the iPhone, iPad operating system is kind of squirrely. Uh, Joseph, none of the iPhone, iPad, iPod touch devices will recognize a Bluetooth GPS device. They just didn't program in that functionality. It's pretty crazy because essentially, as near as I can tell, all GPS comms takes place over a serial port and you emulate the serial port and devices that don't have a serial port, whether it's over USB or Bluetooth or whatever it is. Gotcha. So Bluetooth is not the answer, which is a shame since even an inexpensive Surfstar 3-powered Bluetooth GPS device from a brand you've never heard of runs unbelievably well and is more accurate than the GPS built into the iPhone 3G or 3GS. What you can do on the iPhone 3G, 3GS, and iPod Touch is plug them into Magellan's premium car kit, which is this critter right here. It's 130 bucks, or TomTom's iPod car kit, iPod Touch car kit, which is 100 bucks, or the iPhone car kit. They are vastly improved in terms of GPS reception. None of the stop and go location traffic. It's got nice, consistent that pulsing blue. You may have never seen it if you have an iPhone 3G. There's basically a pulsing blue when it's absolutely locked on your location. Um, these devices, I have trouble here in San Francisco with uh, 3G reception, and actually, I, I, it drives me nuts. Maybe it's my iPhone 3G, but the 3G seems to have miserable GPS reception in terms of satellite reception. If I'm downtown with the tall buildings, I've had problems with almost every GPS receiver in those horrible situations, at least older the ones. New GPS. The new yeah. GPS receivers are amazing. I think mine's like um, two or three years old now. Assisted GPS or AGPS helps a little bit. Essentially, um, it actually helps the iPhone 3GS, because I think the 3GS works a lot better than the 3G in terms of the the uh, GPS functionality, essentially it takes advantage of the triangulating the towers to give the, the GPS kind of a heads up on where it's located and what time it is and everything. So these are just iPod docks? Yeah. I mean, basically, this is the Magellan. It's 130 bucks. Works both with the iPod Touch and the uh, iPhones. And they have a uh, dock connector on one end. Okay. They power your... You, you have to absolutely have these plugged into your lighter socket. So I'm going to do a... Uh, totally. I'm going to emulate the lighter socket here, if you could plug that in. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, they, your phone or your oh. iPod snaps right in. They've got an audio output for your stereo, and they both have uh, a speaker built in. The speaker on the Magellan's on the bottom. The speaker on the TomTom -Tom is on the back. Out of the two of them, I'd say the TomTom -Tom has the better speaker. The TomTom -Tom definitely has the better speaker. They're kind of a, a wash in terms of Bluetooth, but I found the TomTom -Tom speaker was easier to hear. Both of them have speakers because you want to be able to hear your turn-by-turn -turn directions. None of these $100 to $130 devices actually come with a mapping application. You have to pay more money to get your mapping application. <laughs> Could you take advantage of something built in, though? Like, uh, say, like Google Maps or, or Bing Maps or whatever. Yeah, well, it'll help with Google Maps, right? So if you if you if you're like looking for if you know if you have like you know and you shouldn't if you're if your navigator your co-driver has is watching the cell phone, um, this will do actually a better job of keeping where you're going. But there is no turn by turn. There's no talk oh, out loud yeah, like make a right annoying. in a hundred yards. You're going to have to buy an application for that. Um, none of these devices currently work with the iPad. Whether it's a difference in the way the serial connection handshakes over the dot connector, I don't know. Nobody's <laughs> nobody's willing to talk about this. Um, I don't know if they have to be recognized differently for the iPad or if the iPad requires a different software setup or the software blocks because I, I can totally see the the, the <laughs> iPad the, the iPad Wi-Fi like being blocked for GPS and the and the uh, and the uh, 3G not, but basically because um, Navigon, Garmin, and the others all paid Apple probably a billion dollars not to do that. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? And Google's actually coming up with turn by turn directions. It's probably going to be a paid Please. software. What will turn the iPad into a 3G device or a GPS device? Excuse me, is a 3G modem like the MiFi or the Sprint Overdrive that I'm holding here. Ah. It's not quite as good. As GPS devices, those car kits I was holding up, but it works in the city and out in the highway. Um, for anybody who's like, but the, but the Wi-Fi is really good on the iPad. The Wi-Fi really sucks on the iPad if you ever leave the house. Oh, yeah, well. Occasionally, it'll give, you know, if you're in the middle of a town, it might actually give your location, but as soon as you start driving around, the, the, the Wi-Fi location is useless unless you have a Wi-Fi device that spills out GPS data, like the Sprint Overdrive, or which is basically, I did this just so I can emulate a 3G uh, iPad, and you know what? It turns out this plus this is better than the iPad 3G, except for the GPS thing. Pretty cool. I'm still puttering around with the applications. I'm mostly using the big screen on the iPad for backcountry navigation. You should check out Scenic Map and Topo Maps if you haven't. Topo Map downloads bitmaps of standard, um, what do you call them? Uh, 
little circles. I've been reading them since I was topographic maps. Yes, yeah, so I've been reading them since I was like eleven. Uh, Scenic map actually has a full vector map of the like the one I bought is the Western United States. The oh, only nice. iPad ready car navigation app that's not you know basically car and not aviation or boating is HD Copilot. It's thirty bucks annually, I believe. Um, Tom Tom won't recognize GPS via the network on the iPad. I haven't had a chance to test Magellan. Navigon will recognize the GPS over the Wi-Fi. Um, and by the way, if you're thinking about oh, I really want because the idea of this being a backcountry map device is really cool. Except the battery life in the overdrive sucks. You need a car connection, and I'd say the ten hour on the battery life, ten hour battery life in the iPad is no substitute for a dedicated GPS device. No. This is you need geocaching power. for the day. It might work, but this is only two hours at best. Gotcha. And if you want to leave these on constantly, the battery life's going to go way down on this. Yeah, it seems like you're adding some expensive accessories. Like, what is, what is, what is something like that even cost? Like an accessory to add yeah, that? If I already had an iPhone. If you already have an iPhone, um, the Magellan's 130 bucks. Works with okay. both the iPhone and the iPod Touch. The iPod Touch version of the TomTom, Tom, the TomTom Tom car kit for the iPod Touch is 100 bucks. The one that has the Bluetooth functionality for the iPhone is 130. So it'd be cheaper than a, than a dedicated GPS device. And Absolutely. Yet another device that you have to go buy. Yeah. If so. you don't have, I mean, you know, if, if you know, basically it's a mount, it's charging, it's the GPS, it's also a hands-free Bluetooth device. So if you don't have a mount yeah. already, um, it kind of combines a bunch of features. I bought this basically because I. I love the idea of using this for navigation because it's an all-in-one tool. But for my purposes, the GPS hardware on my 3G stinks. So if you're looking for something to upgrade that, this is a great way to go. Out of the two of them, I think the TomTom -Tom has the edge because the speaker sounds a lot brighter and clearer than the Magellan. Probably means you'll use it more. Yeah. In terms of GPS performance, I'd say they're a wash, but the Bluetooth performance and the speaker performance on the TomTom -Tom has the lead. Get your hands free on. Yes. Yeah.